stuff on the telephones, uh, the internet, but also people are, are being assaulted or attacked. And uh, I just kind of have like some bullet points. I didn't like do a PowerPoint. I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint. So I just want to talk about different bullet things. So uh, first and foremost, having the attitude that I hope it doesn't happen to me as your self-proclamation uh, just isn't going to work. Uh, I would say play those incidents in your head, like what am I going to do, what is my plan, what is my avenue of escape. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of your uh, advertisements uh, on billboards and magazines, television, and uh, a lot of realtors like The Flash. You guys, gentlemen, you're dressed nice, you have a nice wash. Ladies, you have nice rings and jewelries and everything like that. You draw attention to yourselves. So you're putting yourself out there. You're providing uh, people your telephone, your Facebook, uh, your, your Twitter handle. Uh, so you're giving uh, <coughs> individuals that might have an agenda um, that avenue to, uh, to have that interaction with you. So I would say that when you are going to have any type of interaction with people, make sure you meet with someone in person and you do it at your, uh, your office, first and foremost. Um, but let me ask you guys this. Anyone here have any like teenage kids, like 15, 16 years old? Yeah. Are they dating anyone? Better not be. Yeah. Right. So I, Lisa and I have a 15 year old daughter. She tells us that she's dating a young boy. And I'm like, oh, what's his last name? <laughs> no, I did not run him in the collect NCIC yeah, you know, database. That's illegal. But what I immediately did was, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I Googled him. I Googled his dad. I went on Facebook. I said, what's the dad's name? The, the, the dad has, in this case, 60 mutual friends. Oh, guess what I did? I started reaching out to people. What's the story with this kid? What's the story with the dad? Thank God I got good family, good dad. What is gonna stop you guys from doing the same thing? You get a cold call from someone that says, hey, I would like to look at a property. Aren't you guys getting all of their information? A Little bit of a red flag nowadays if you type in someone's name into Google and nothing comes up, right? Yeah, that, that should be red flag number one. You know, uh, look at their profile on, on Facebook. Do you have a, a mutual friend? That can actually be beneficial to you because then you reach out to the mutual friend and say, hey, make sure they sign with me and hook me up. <laughs> I also want to make sure that the person doesn't have some type of an ulterior motive. All right, so it, it's just having, just the, the presence to take the, the five minutes to go and do a little bit of a background on this individual. All right, um, I said talk about like, you know, a public place. The office is the best, best place to do it. If you're doing an open house, by no means should you do an open house by yourself. Because I'll tell you what, like I said, I'm 6'8", I carry a gun, people think I'm all big and bad, but guess what? If there's an open door at someone's house and a burglar alarm is going on, do you think I go into the house by myself? No. I wait for another officer, and then I hide behind that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we go in, we go into this house together. But in the meantime, as I'm waiting for them, I can walk around the outside of the house, right? I'm meeting a client at, at a house, they want to see, it, see this house. Take the, the couple of minutes, walk around the exterior of, of the residence, and check for, is there an open door? Is there broken windows? Is there some sign that this house has been broken into? Could someone be lying in wait for you? Right? Who here has never thought of that? Right. It's like, yeah. yeah, walk around the house. Oh, why is that back door wide open? Because I'll tell you what, if you're then walking into a scene where a crime has occurred, like a burglary, um, you're then contaminating that scene. So you want to just wait in your car, lock your windows, and wait for the police to come. On that note, uh, stuff has been in the, in the media of, of people having the police call on them, realtors, or showing clients' houses. If you suspect that 
there's a nosy neighbor that is probably going to call. Do yourselves a favor and just call the police department, the non-emergency line, and just say, hey, I'm so-and-so from Signature Properties, and I'm going to be showing the residents at 325 Great Neck Road. I'm driving a, a, a red uh, Mercedes, and uh, my client should be driving this car. Okay, thanks a lot. They now know you're down there. So when that person calls, they're gonna go, hey, that's Lisa Maffeo, that's Marilyn Lusher. We know that they are supposed to be there. It's gonna save them the time of having to go down there and possibly embarrass yourself or the person that is looking at the house. Uh, trust your gut. You gotta have situational awareness. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of this stuff kind of gets put at the wayside nowadays because of this. We're a prisoner of our own device. We have our heads buried in our phone and we're not getting those subtle clues or body language from people that we should be. All right, so when you meet these individuals, how many times have you guys met with someone and you're like, they're just, there's something about them? <laughs> Yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you walk into a room and you're like, this doesn't feel right. How many of you have been at a showing and people come in and you're like, oh, I, I better pay attention. Yeah. At the end. At the end. How many of you are bringing your purses into the shows? How many of you, if you're showing a house that is occupied, are encouraging your clients to lock up their valuables, lock up their medications? Mm -hmm. Right? Little simple things that can prevent them from making an accusation against you. But also, looking around. I'm looking at the counter. What could be used against me? Or what could I use against someone? You don't need to raise your hand, but how many of you carry a weapon with you? Pepper spray. Uh, a knife. Or a gun. You can carry a gun. You can carry a knife. You can carry a pepper spray in mind, number one, are you willing to use it? And number two, it can be used against you. All right, so if you are encountering someone, if you can put some type of a distance between you and that person and then grab something, hit them and run, then you stand a good chance. No matter what, fight. Fight, fight, fight. But before you get into those situations, let people know that you are having a show. That you are letting everyone know because you put it all over social media, correct? <laughs> all the good guys and all the bad guys know it too as well. Let your spouse know. Check in with people. If uh, you're, you're doing this with like your broker or your significant other or something that you have like contact with, shoot off a text to them. Hey, things are going well. I just want to let you know. Um, you know, I'm going to be here for another hour or so. Um, just little things like that. Does anyone here have Life 360 on their phone? Yeah. The entire Maffeo family has it on their phone. So we all know where each other is at any given moment. However, it's not 100% accurate. There are times that it doesn't always work. But I know that if my wife says that she's at a specific address, then I know she's there. So I have some way of, of knowing. Now, we got to talk about that. Life 360 thing, right, Lisa? <laughs> um, have any of you used like a, a safety app ever? So yeah, I did some research. There's different types of apps. If you just go into your app store, all right? How many of you have like a safety word with uh, your office that something is going wrong? Anyone? So Gil, the Connecticut Realtors have the Forewarn app. I hope yep. all of you use it. It is a free app. Um, and then Central Lock is something that eCar uses, and in that app, there is a safety feature. Yeah, but it can just be something as simple as, uh, do you have access to that red file? That is the, the word triggering that the authorities need to be called, or that I'm in kind of a, a bad situation. You know, um, throughout my career in Waterford, if we are going to go to the station, we say we're on a 13. 
So if I'm standing there with one of my coworkers and we know that we are going to take someone into custody, I'm not necessarily going to look at them and go, all right, we're going to lock him up. I'm just going to look at my coworker and be like, this is a 13. My coworker knows I've triggered that, that mindset that we may have to go hands on. This could be bad or it could be really good, but this person right here is going to have something like that with people at, at the office or with the family member. Hey, do you have that red, red folder? We all know where you are. Hopefully you've let them know that will trigger a response. Keep your phone charged. How many of you have been at showings or have been doing stuff and you look down and you're like, I have like 5% on my phone. Make sure that your phone is charged all the time. Um, be assertive. If you, if you come across as being kind of sheepish, that will encourage someone to do something. If you're assertive and you have confidence, uh, the people will think twice about wanting to harm you or to uh, try something with you. But then there's also that population that just doesn't care. If you have access to cameras, uh, utilize them. Have a, a sign-in sheet is definitely going to be a, a good thing. And I know people sometimes don't write uh, very clearly. Ask them, hey, like, I can't really read that. What did you say your name was? Get the person to um, uh, you know, repeat their name. Uh, have an office policy that require, sorry, requires potential clients to submit a photo ID. Now, we need to show a photo ID of the doctor, right? Oh, you want to go and buy a half a million dollar house? I kind of want to know who you are. Let me have your driver's license. I believe you have to show your driver's license if you're going to go purchase a car, correct? You guys can also have whatever policies that you want if it's your office. If you turn around and you say, hey, this is a policy, we want to see your ID, we want to, we're just creating a file on you. This is how I remember who you are. Um, some other things, uh, and I mentioned securing firearms, uh, any kind of uh, medication or jewelry. Uh, how many uh, people here have access to Narcan? Uh, um, we were given some extras uh, of Narcan. I actually gave one to my wife and I said, carry this on. Because you could be exposed to fentanyl. Fentanyl is all over the place now. It's mixed in with marijuana, cocaine. Uh, you could walk into a house and not even know it and wipe your fingers uh, across the uh, counter and have a fentanyl exposure. And that Narcan could be used for you. Narcan could also be used if something is happening to a client of yours. Um, have an exit plan. When you're at the house, I uh, kind of left this. Um, have that plan in place, but know your exits. One way in, one way out. But know, can I get out that back door? So maybe the back door is locked, but it's not dead bolted. Uh, so you can have a quick exit. But you want to make sure that people are coming in from one way and they're not coming in from multiple places. They're not coming in by the garage, uh, the front door, the back door. You want to know who is coming in, but also greet the people as they come in. Don't let them come to you, you come to them. So as they're walking through, through the door, you know, it's going to be a first impression too. And I think you're also going to kind of figure out what do I have on my hands here, right? Um, keep your phone in your hand or near you at all times and also uh, let buyers drive, drive themselves. <coughs> kind of seems like nowadays that is what is going on, but I remember when I was a kid and my parents were looking at places we hopped in the real first car. Um, is that still going on? They're jumping in the car with you? Alright, so how many of you when you go to a showing, then lock your car. <coughs> Everybody needs to raise your hand. How many of you are locking your cars at night and then taking your keys in with you? <laughs> Everyone should have their, their hands up. So that's another thing. You go into a showing, you go into the office, lock your car, don't give them a reason to want to break into your car, but also you don't want someone waiting for you <coughs> in your car when, when you come walking out. All right, you want me to continue?
No, we're oh. pretty much at your time. Oh, okay. Um, just to, to wrap up, just have a plan in place. Uh, make sure that you guys are paying attention, like I said. Um, get your heads out of, out of your phones. Um, let the text messages or phone calls wait. And then when you can get into the safety of your car or your office or somewhere where it's secure, I'm gonna carry on your business. You guys have any questions or anything? Also, what a, uh, smart watches, uh, SOS on Apple or Android watches. Two of Waterford Finest came to my house because I had gloves on, I was cutting the lawn and I happened to hit the sequence twice. My wife thought I had a medical emergency. It was, but they came, so. His so. wife for police will come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you, um, if you are in the a, a house or scenario and you touch fentanyl, is, is, is that something that can go like through your skin or you have yes. to ingest it? It, it can, it's transdermal, but if it gets into a mucous membrane, it's going to be very fast happening. So just, just be careful. Uh, you know, you see something and it just doesn't seem right, it's like, don't touch it, you know? Yes? How would regular people get a hold of you? You can walk into a pharmacy or at some firehouse